and welcome back. What a long extended summer holiday it has been. Absolute pleasure to say my name is Nikki Shields and we are back for another episode of Straight Talk with Mahindra Racing to kick off Formula E's season eight. I can't believe it. I'm saying those words aloud. We are at season eight in the history of electric street racing and it's going to be a really, really fantastic season, particularly because joining me now, I have two of the top drivers for Mahindra Racing and team principal Dil Bagil. Um, guys, welcome. Oliver Rowland, welcome. Not nice to see you. And of course, Alexander Sims back for another season. Um, guys, first of all, how are you doing? How have you all been? Dilbag, kick us off. Well, it's been a busy summer as usual, <laughs> I think, yeah, because we finished last year quite well in the end, like in terms of some of the goals that you wanted to achieve. And I think, yeah, so the momentum was kept continuing through summer. And yeah, with Roland joining us now, Alexander in the second year, quite exciting. Yeah, I think we're looking forward to season eight and hopefully getting back to semi normal races after one year, year and a half. Yeah, of, uh, like uh, stuff, something the world opening up. I think it's going to be really exciting. Most important question, though, did you have time for a summer holiday? What's that? <laughs> Seriously, like, I think this, this year was like, it's a what's that question. I bet your two drivers had time. Oliver Island, how are you? <laughs> very good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very good, thanks. Did you have time for a break? I didn't actually, no. 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 I've been oh. quite busy and I've got a little one now. So. Oh, yeah, of course, because you bought your brand new baby girl. Yeah. Uh, to the race when she was, what, three weeks? Yeah, three weeks in London, yeah. <gasps> Amazing. How's that been going? Yeah, it's good, busy times, but yeah, she's doing really well. Um, you're looking quite fresh-faced. I'm thinking maybe your wife is doing most of the nights at the moment. Yeah, but she's actually <laughs> sleeping very well, so we're both very, very lucky Ooh. at the moment. Ha <laughs> ha enjoy it. <laughs> it's not going to last. <laughs> um, Alexander, how are you? Very well, yeah, yeah, very well. I did Please tell me you manage... got a holiday. Yeah, I did manage yeah. to get away. That was the whole point. <laughs> um, straight after Le Mans, I, I went off for a, a week's holiday in Cyprus, so that was very nice. Lovely. Feeling recharged and ready to go for season eight, though? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think we've had a lot of good work in the, the simulator in the off-season, and, yeah, looking forward to getting on track and seeing if, uh, seeing if it correlates as we hopefully expect, yeah. Excellent. Well, um, before we do sort of crack on and really get into things, um, can we take note of our amazing location? Now, you might be listening to this um, as our podcast, in which case you cannot see our amazing location. We are sitting here in an EMC chamber. Um, now, I know what it is because I've just been briefed about what it is. Do you guys actually have any idea what we're sitting in? <laughs> Well, we've overheard you being briefed, I think, <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah. about all we know, but it's pretty cool. It is, it is amazing. OK, so picture this. We're basically in a kind of cube. Um, it is covered in polystyrene, you know, yeah, they're basically polystyrene um, uh, square panels. And obviously we're in a sort of soundproof room. And basically what it is for is because when you make a car, there are obviously lots of different components and they each, or lots of them, can have their own electromagnetic current or frequency. And to make sure that they don't interact with each other, they are tested in this chamber. Um, so very, very exciting to be sitting here. It's a very cool environment to kick off our chat. Um, but I think we should probably start with you, Oliver, because you're in your, your new team kit. How does it feel to be wearing this for the first time, I suppose, as a public appearance, because it is the launch of uh, the Season 8 car? Yeah, very excited. Um, yeah, it's a, a little bit of a homecoming, really, because uh, I obviously drove for Mahindra in, in Season 2 for a one-off race, um, and me and Dilbag had always kept in touch. Um, obviously, I'd gained three years of experience at Nissan over the last three years. Um, I think over those years, I gained experience and also matured in myself. And yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Um, we're, we're, we know what the challenge is, um, but I think we're ready for it. And hopefully as a team and, you know, with Alexander, we can push the whole team forward and, and you know, hopefully uh, get some good results. So who called who about this position? I did. <laughs> <laughs> he did look to check though before he said anything, which is good, which is good. <laughs> was like uh, Oliver said, like we've been in touch since the drive we had in like in season two. Yeah, we've we also just, like, just been in touch and he said, okay, when the opportunity came and yeah, he started showing some decent results in the last three years. <laughs> some ones have put a bit of pressure on us also with some of his results, including I think yeah, he did a fantastic job in the last race in Berlin also. But he, both of you guys had a bit of a battle at Berlin right in the last race. Yeah, and it was interesting. The start of things to come. Yeah, you had that podium finish, which was a fantastic way to end the season. Um, Dilbeck, specifically, what is it that you think that Oliver can really bring to the team, to Mahindra Racing? 
See, traditionally, like, um, sorry, Mahindra has been pretty strong in qualifying and Oliver has been one of the best in qualifying. Mm -hmm. And okay, so like hoping to keep a car up front. And I think as we've improved our car over the last odd year, once we're up front, we know we can race up there. I think so that's really important one is, is he does a very good job of the single lap and like even like Alexander Sims I think if I'm not mistaken you still have the record of three consecutive poles I think Ant Antonio before. matched I, I forgot that okay that that's the date of fact yeah but he was you were the first to get it yes that's okay, correct, so yeah. still remember that so I think for us like looked at his strengths in terms of a single lap pace and as all of himself said I think we've seen some maturity over him over the last three years he's uh, he's worked with uh, Nissan a very strong team and I think one of the best like to benchmark against and I think I'm quite excited like, to see what he can bring. And to a small extent, I should not be saying this, but I'm going to say it. He reminds me of Nigel Mansell. Okay. Wow. That's what I'm That's going to look at. Okay, like, the guy out there, he's got his el He's going to put his elbows out there, not going to give an inch. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, eyes sort of forward, sort of drive. And I think that's going back. And I think that talks about my age now. When it, uh, like I bring uh, my Nigel Mansell sort of reference. I would sort of relate him. Okay, now I think that gives you an idea what I think, you know. On his day, he's going to be up there. The Amazing. Oliver, well, how does that make you feel to hear Dilbag say that? Yes, yeah, pretty, uh, obviously, yeah, Nigel is an amazing driver and, you know, did lots of great things. So, yeah, that's obviously great to hear. Um, you know, I think our ambitions are aligned between all of us, to be honest. So I'm, you know, really, really excited and, and yeah, hopefully it can be successful. Uh, you were particularly good in qualifying, very strong. But we have a new qualifying format, of course. How do you think you're going to fare uh, in the, the new qualifying format? Will it be as competitive for you? Yeah, well, I think, you know, previously I was always in, in, in quite a good championship position. So I was always in quite an early group. So it was always more difficult to get to the super poles and, and get the qualifying, um, you know, up the front. So I think as long as we have the pace, the new groups will show. I think they're a little bit more fair for the whole grid. Um, I think, you know, in previous years, um, there was a lot of track evolution. Some places we went, some not. Um, but I think, you know, if you have the speed, it's not going to change too much. You're going to go into, you know, these shootouts with the top eight guys and you're going to have to be the best on the day. So I think, uh, you know, the, the, the first goal has to be to be one of the quickest over one lap. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, I think once we do that, then I think there'll be, there'll be no real worries on, on that side. And there's no hiding now. You can't blame the, the track evolution. You can't blame the group you're in. It's going to purely be about the quickest drivers on track, which is going to be a great spectacle for us as fans to watch. Yeah, I'm excited for it. I think it's, it's exactly what we needed. You know, I think the, the old system worked well and it brought a lot of unpredictability, but almost too much in the end, you know, you, mm -hmm. you saw... For example, in, in season, I think season six, I was second in the championship going into the last race and the Q1 was the last six positions yes. on the grid. It, you know, in that situation, it's not what Formula E should be about. You know, it's a very high level championship. And I honestly think that this new system will, uh, you know, you'll, you'll have to be on your absolute A game to be on the front row in, in this next year. Yeah, Alexander, I can see, see you shaking your head, nodding in agreement there. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's... Um... <laughs> Yeah, as, as Oliver summed up pretty much, it's it just makes it fairer for, for the entire grid and it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be more down to the pure performance of, of the driver and car combination every single weekend rather than making the most out of favourable track conditions, for mm -hmm. example. You know? Yeah, exactly. And obviously you're back for another year with Mahindra. So how are you feeling about that? Excited about yeah. the challenge that lies ahead? Absolutely. Yeah, really looking forward to... Uh, kicking off in, in Season 8. I think we've had a, a decent amount of um, learning done in the simulator during the off-season, trying to correlate what we um, felt was the situation in, in Season 7 sometimes with with um, with data, I guess, on the simulator and trying to you know, quantify it and, and find solutions to certain things. Um, and, yeah, I think that's gone well but it's always difficult in the simulator to mm. know whether that's going to then um, be exactly the case on track or not but um, I've got faith in the, the whole team you know they've got a lot of brilliant people in the team that have been working incredibly hard so um, yeah looking forward to getting out on track. And do you think you've learned quite a lot from season seven you know are you being a, can you sort of use all the information that you've learned from that past season to prepare for season eight? Yeah well I mean the, because the um, the drivetrain and the, the, the entire car uh, from a hardware perspective is, is the same mm -hmm. um, with the homologation um, being frozen between the two seasons. It, 
it means that it's it's given us more time, I guess, to to optimize the package we've we've got um, rather than trying to learn a new package. Obviously, that's the same for every team up and down the grid, but um, it's it's nevertheless been been a good a good off season for us. I think um, we had some areas to to improve on, um, and and I think we've we've done a good job of that. So yeah, looking forward to it. Excellent. So. Both drivers are very content. Um, obviously, getting Alexander back in the seat, what was it that kind of makes him such a, a fit with the Mahindra family racing team? I think with Alexander, I think uh, in the car, he's really brilliant. And I think uh, with the varying conditions of Formula, he adapts really well. And I think like the way he sort of goes racing, we've always seen that okay, once you put in the car, wherever he's qualified, he's moving forward. With Alexander and like, I love to see the battles which he gets onto. But I think off track also, we've learned a lot from him. Uh, like Mahindra took the sustainability journey quite seriously, and Alexander sort of been prodding us in the back. Okay, I can like every couple of weeks I get this little thing and we're uh, think okay, we need to move on out here. And I th I'm really proud because sustainability is something which we've just not been talking about, but we have been doing stuff with it. And just last week we got the ISO. 14,001 2015 certification. So I think we are one of the first teams again to get that. So not just the form, uh, like FIA standards, now we've gone and uh, like adapt ourselves to the global standards also. Mm -hmm. And the small little details like Alexander suggestion, which was something took us for some time to even realize and get, get it going was, let's start an electric car scheme for all our employees. So we've gone and implemented that. We're putting up six charging stations now, with, uh, thanks to our friends at ABB, they're coming up and- Brilliant. Thing. And it's just funny because these charging stations should have come up a couple of months ago. And imagine the global chip shortage, then there's no charging stations available to buy right uh. now. But, uh, and, yeah, but I think next month, these six places are coming up. So yeah, we are, this is going to be for our employees on the sustainability side and the end of it, also taking out for people in Banbury who can come and start using it. Brilliant, brilliant. I know. Can you believe it? A chip shortage has managed to affect us so much when it comes to Computer development. chips, not McDonald's chips. Oh, is it? Oh, right. Okay. Thanks for clearing up that one. <laughs> I've been avoiding it for, for McDonald's for ages because I thought that was a, that was a chip shortage. Chips, crisps story. I can never figure <laughs> out. Because we, call, we call it chips, right? <laughs> you guys call it crisps. And then something else becomes chips. So, yeah, fried potato stuff. Love it. <laughs> so, fingers crossed we get all the chips of all the varieties <laughs> coming our way soon. Um, yeah, because Alison, it's such a good point that Dilbert Bates, though. You know, you've been one of the kind of early um, trailblazers when it comes to driving electric cars and that's on our roads as well as on the racetrack. What are you driving at the moment? I've got my e Nero Kia. Um, nice. That's a very good, solid family car. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I just enjoy driving them and they seem to make a lot of sense, I think, for the majority of people. And it's, yeah, it's, it's very nice that I think the movement um, is going towards electric vehicles. They're, they're a good solution to um, yeah, decarbonised per personal transportation at least, so yeah, no, they're good. I mean, you kind of came up the traditional ranks of single-seaters, all with internal combustion engines. Did you ever think, oh, one day I'm going to race electric cars? <laughs> no, it's funny because I think a lot of people in Formula E probably drove an electric race car before they drove a, a road car. Um, but for me, it's always been the other way around, you know. I, I, I drove my first electric car in, I think it's 2011. Um, and yeah, I've been driving them pretty much every day since then. So it's uh, it's kind of funny in that sense. But the the world that we see now, I'm, I'm sure it's the same in all sorts of different industries. But certainly, yeah, the road car, the, the internal combustion engine's been, you know, although it's been being improved, it's a fairly stagnant technology. It's been around for quite some time. So it's a it's a massive shift to to now be going electric. Yeah, I mean, it, does it feel quite a privilege? I suppose to be part of this huge movement that, you know, when Formula E started back in 2014, electric cars, they were sort of few and far between. The infrastructure was beyond appalling. It was non-existent. Whereas now you look at it and it's just growing exponentially and it's sort of the biggest growth sector. Yeah, it's been, it's been awesome, awesome to witness it. Um, the, the huge shift that, that's happened in, in our sector. Um, yeah, I mean, I was one of those people sat at <laughs> motorway service stations when they had like a seven kilowatt charger Ooh. was the the high speed charging Ooh. and i'd sit there for an hour because i needed Ooh. to get tw chips. 20 miles home <laughs> yeah exactly eating lots of chips um 
and so now to, to see like the charging infrastructure we've got on the highways, um, I mean, it still needs to keep improving and, and it is, oh, yeah. um, but the, the, the change that's happened is just incredible. Yeah. It's really cool yes, to witness. It's still the beginning. But... It's like interesting to see when you went for Nürburgring in your car and you did this little blog of it, yes, yes. comparing it like when you did it earlier with the petrol car and this year when you did it with the electric stuff and it's pretty amazing. Like what was the time difference for you to get there and back? Like. Um, oh, now you put me on the spot. I can't actually remember the full comparison. It was, I would say, probably about an hour and 45 of charging to get to Nürburgring, which which it was fine, actually. Um, but even the, the e-Nero that I drive doesn't actually rapid charge particularly quickly. Um, and so you could quite easily, in, in modern cars or current cars coming out now, um, get that probably down to 35, 40 minutes. Um, so like you did this comparison, like, with, like between the petrol thing, it is hardly the difference from England to Nürburgring and back, like time just like one hour or something, I think overall the driving time. Total, uh, yes, yeah, yeah not, not a huge amount different, yeah. no. Um, that was really amazing to see. But no, that's cool, so you can go a long way with them. Yeah, exactly, where are you going next? <laughs> well, yeah. Can I come? <laughs> yeah. Going to Saudi Arabia? That would be a long way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to work out the next road trip. OK, maybe Paris. That'd be easier. <laughs> um, let's talk about today, because today, of course, has been the season eight launch of the M7 Electro. Uh, what do you guys think about the way the car looks? I think it looks great. I think it's uh, very red. Uh, <laughs> very, very red, very bright. Um, you're not going to miss us. Um, Which is yeah. good because there are a couple of other red cars now on the scene in Formula yeah, I think So gonna, you're making a statement. Like, we rest. own this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I think it looks really nice. I think the, they've done the design really nicely. The, the, the new logo as well is, is very nice on the rear of the car, the way they've mm -hmm. got the pattern. Um, and yeah, I think it looks pretty mean. And if it's as fast as it looks, then we, we should be okay. Yeah, you're in agreement Absolutely. there. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, really nice evolution from, uh, you know, Mahindra has in Formula has always had red. Um, associated with it, but now it's as, as Ollie says, it's it's fully red. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, that is definitely no the dominant colour. No missing color. it. Yeah. No, cool. um, and what do you think about the names? So every year, um, the fans get to choose or vote. I don't think they get to choose. I suppose it's a competition. Um, and if, uh, two lucky fans have been chosen this year. Um, and Alexander, your car name is Wrath. Mm -hmm. And just to be clear, that is Rath, R-A-T-H, not with a W, because you're not an angry driver. Um, and, and it actually means chariot in Hindu. So your chariot awaits, sir, is the line I'm going to be using on the grid a lot. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the name? Like it, yeah. Um, it's it's fun thing to do, um, to, to name our cars each year. Um, nice interaction with the fans to, to give suggestions and things. Um, no, it's, it's, it's a nice little thing. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. And um, Oliver Rowland's car is called Roll With It, <laughs> not R-O-L-L. -L. I like these like plays on <laughs> the spelling of these words. Um, but obviously R-O-W-L. Uh, what do you think of that? Are you going to channel your inner oasis while you're driving down the front street? Yeah, I think so. I think it, <laughs> it quite, matches quite well, you know, that just, just roll with it and let's see how it goes, you know. I think... Uh, yeah, it sounds pretty cool. It's got a, a little, you know, twang to it. But, uh, but yeah, I'm happy with it, and hopefully it's uh, towards the front of the grid. Can you sing us a version? <laughs> no? Not even just one line? Got to by the end of the year. <laughs> You've got to have a... Yes! Oliver's OK, your first win for Mahindra. Will you sing it on the podium? OK. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, well, brilliant. But we do have to stick to it. it. Yeah. I stuck to my dancing. Yeah, you, you did, you did dance. Oh, that yeah. is true. That is true. <laughs> we challenged Alexander for his first podium to do a dance, and he did it. <laughs> brilliant. Okay, so. To add to this, like in 75 years of Mahindra, we've only changed the logo twice, and today is the third time it's ever been. And for the first time ever, for the whole group, the new word mark is coming on a race car. So this wow. little thing what you see out here is a newer word mark in 75 years of history. It's when we only had two other word marks, and this is for the third one coming in. And we're also launching our new electric car uh, logo it's called the Twin Peak. So it's quite big for us at Mahindra. We're making a big statement over the next decade coming in. That, okay, what's our, what we've been doing race to road and how that's sort of going to start translating down. Because in the, I think by 23 to 24, we're going to have around six new, all new electric vehicles, which Mahindra is going to be launching. Wow. And this is sort of the 
genesis and start the journey today. And, uh, you know, I think that's such a good point as well. You know, Mahindra Racing within Formula E have all been, always been so committed. You know, you guys were the first to commit to the Gen 3 car as well. You were one of the first teams to join at the beginning. Um, but talk us through, I suppose, the, the meaning of this logo and also were you part of the sort of the journey of the design development of where it is today? <laughs> I don't know much. <laughs> <In terms of laughs> the journey, kind of, we are, we are, I think I really know the, this better that we are the first Mahindra group organization to start using it. And they said, okay, so nowhere in the world this thing. So today it's being unveiled for the first time, mm -hmm. the new logo on our car, both of this coming together. And I think that's a pretty big intent and pretty big statement from our side. And at the same time, we're also setting up the Mahindra sort of electric center of excellence at Banbury. So we're having a design studio come in and start putting up some cool cars, etc. So I'm, I'm quite excited, like what we have invested in the last couple of years, we're now going to start seeing some of the results coming in. Mm -hmm. We, As you guys know, we have done the project on the left, uh, which is the Automobile Pendant Free Note Batista, which is again a brand launched at a Formula E race th three years ago when you were there at, at Rome. And would you ever believe like two years later, the, the car's on the road <laughs> and it's a slightly nice looking car and I'm sure... Have you, have, have you had a drive in it? Well, I have not had a drive yet. You should get you one I think sometime. I've sat in it. <laughs> no have we, though. No have we. Shotgun. Uh, insurance doesn't allow that yet. Okay. Yes, brilliant. <laughs> no, we get you guys, but... All on record, these are wonderful. <laughs> no, that, that, that car is just amazing because that's yeah, the first time in my life when I sat on the throttle, like my kidneys are far behind me, like it had to catch up a few more minutes <laughs> later. And it's like 1,900 hours. But I'm, like, the point I'm trying to make is we made some very bold statements on Formula and today's another day of a bold statement with the launch. And, um, and actually, because obviously we've got listeners as well as viewers um, who can't actually see the logo at the moment. Now, uh, we haven't spoken to the designer of the logo yet. We are talking to him later. So I would describe this as a butterfly. Is this something that I should not be saying? Or is that what he would describe it as as well? Call it the Twin the, Peak logo. The Twin Peak logo, which looks a bit like a butterfly. <laughs> Twin Peaks, brilliant. Um, it, it, it actually works really, really well. It looks fantastic. So um, we look forward to actually having a catch up with the the, uh, the head of the design for that later. Um, very quickly, because we are running out of time, the season ahead. It's going to be a good one, isn't it? We've got three new tracks, uh, Jakarta, Seoul, Vancouver. Guys, very quickly, which race are you looking forward to the most? <laughs> Tough to say out of those three. Um, I think because... You could pick any from the calendar. 16 okay. races to choose from. Um... I think I know what you were going to say, so yeah, I'll probably you go, go for with it. Monaco. Yeah. I always, I always enjoy going. Yeah, nice. It's, uh, you know, I think last year was the first time on the big circuit. We're going to be going back again with a slightly less protocols in place, and mm -hmm. hopefully there'll be some we better celebrating. Keep your, we better keep your timing on online so you get out for qualifying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Monaco yeah, was missed, a disaster last year. Missed Super Bowl last year. Yeah. year. <laughs> um, but yeah, Monaco for me. Um, but also the the new venues that you mentioned are pretty cool. I'm looking forward to to visiting them as well. Yeah, I, I find it mad still in Formula E that we go to these places like when I was in, well, my whole racing career up till now, really, you know, to, to think of actually racing in Vancouver or Seoul or Jakarta or any of the other places that we've had on the current calendar already. Um, it's bonkers. So, yeah, I mean, all of them, all honestly, of the really above. tough, really I, tough I to, kind of to choose one. To be fair. Um, Go back. <laughs> Do you have a, oh, sorry, I'm moving on. Are you, you going to answer? No. Uh, oh, I was going <laughs> okay, okay, to say, maybe going back to Rome, that was where <laughs> okay. we had a very good result. Uh, maybe uh, towards yeah. that cool circuit, but they're all, they're all pretty good. <laughs> so Rome, for, you're going to move up a step and take your first win. <laughs> if it doesn't happen yeah, in I'd Saudi or Yeah, I'd be happy to even settle Mexico. for seconds yeah, exactly. again. Um, but yes, yeah. <laughs> Still back shaking his head. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the win at all the new circuits. So, yeah. What are you singing? Pardon? What are you singing? Well, I haven't committed to that. Yeah. That's just no. you, mate. Right? <laughs> I'll dance again. I'll do the dance Oh, he again. said it. He said it. He's going to do With the dance. With a suit. <laughs> I think uh, I stick to legal guidelines <laughs> and uh, keep the suit on. So you've got two performers here, Dillbag. I know. Looking forward to that. <laughs> Not just on the track. Uh, Favourite track? Do you have one? I'm looking forward to Vancouver. Yeah, OK. I think that's going to be quite interesting because the time of the year we're getting there also mm -hmm. and, uh, is going to be quite nice. And I think it's also pretty close to some of the markets you're trying to talk to, right? To the, say, uh, like the West Coast of America, etc. Where I think this can have a pretty big impact. But there have been a lot of pioneering stuff coming out from there. So I'm looking forward to Vancouver. I look forward to every track. Okay, yeah. but particularly <laughs> I think with the whole festival going to be happening there and this uh, sort yeah, of being ended with the true. race. I think it's 
It's going to be a great celebration, isn't it? So when we um, had the Montreal in season three, was really nice. Like, so we enjoyed Canada in, in season three, and I'm looking forward to them back. Yeah, we had a good day there. Right, OK, before we do run out of time, we are going to finish with a quick fire round, uh, mainly really to get to know you, Oliver, and see if Simsy and Dillbag say anything interesting. <laughs> Um, we've got eight quick fire questions and they've got to be quick. Otherwise, it defeats the point of the quick fire question. Are you ready? Yes. Yep. Oh, fighting good. door. OK, right. Here we go. What is your favourite colour? Blue. Red. Red. Come on, get with the programme, Oliver. <laughs> if, I <say> the <laughs> if I say the word spaghetti, what word would normally follow with that? Bolognese. Hoops. Bolognese. <laughs> Yeah. My kids eat spaghetti hoops. Brilliant. What is the best car in the world? The Hindra. Pininfarina. Public transport. <laughs> I, I don't have a car right now. Oh, oh do you not? I use public transport. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> if you could have any superpower, what would it be? To go back in time. Oh, interesting one. Invisibility. Spread kindness. Oh. That's lovely. What would you do back in time? Just have interest. Oh, no, I actually meant the other way. I'd go forward. Go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back I'm to like, the Romans. Why do you want to repeat what you've already done? <laughs> Unless it was a really good win. <laughs> oh, missed the dear. Apex. Rewind. <laughs> oh, still missed it. Oh. <laughs> Who's your biggest idol? Like physically busy, biggest or...? <laughs> you can go for either <laughs> Prince. Senna, Prince. Mahatma Gandhi. Wow. Do a on it. Where's your favourite place to go on holiday? Croatia. Hmm. Thailand. <laughs> home. In a few Aww. days I can get back home. That's what I'm Oh, till back. <laughs> oh, your, your family must miss you a lot. Um, OK, running or cycling? Running. Running. You can say dancing if you want. We know you like dancing. Cycling, I can't run. Yeah, so there's no choice. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the cycling. <laughs> Loving Elect your electric cycling. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, I'm high fiving you there. <laughs> uh, final question Does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Hmm, I would agree with that. Yes, it does. Well, guys, thank you so much. Absolute pleasure to have the dream team, the three of you together for the first time ahead of season eight. Do join us as we will be heading to Saudi Arabia at the end of January for the first two rounds of the season eight APV FIA Formula E World Championship. See you then.